Okay, and we're back. Um, you're watching um, us play a Let's Play of Tales of Azilia. Uh I'm joined here. My name is Dan. I'll be your host. I'm joined here by Lord Strahl. Hello, hello. And Tempest. Hey, people. Hopefully they will join me for many Let's Plays to come. Of uh, course. That's my hope, at least. So, um, we just finished up uh, Episode 2. And we're going to move right back into where we stopped with um, uh, episode uh, three here of our Let's Play. So let's continue. And there's And bird. that would be a guest star, my bird, Dusty, who just <laughs> decided that he wanted to be a part of the cast. Right. I want a cracker. <laughs> so in we go, straight back into gameplay. Now, uh, as me and... Uh, and Tempest were talking about earlier the importance of character right. development in a lot of games that we don't see today. One of the things that really has been, I've been seeing a severe lack in the market in, in terms of just like RPG games. I mean, lately, you know, the biggest fad has been the indie trend of like making old 2D platformers or Minecraft ripoffs left and right. But in terms of RPG games, you know, I'm really glad to see that Tales, you know, ha kind of has like, I don't, you know, criticize me for using the term but the pokemon effect where you can always you know go back to the game and rely on it for having that certain level of quality in regards to having you know quality character development and characters that you actually can get attached to in some regard because one of the things that you see most rpgs these days the characters are very bland very stale or you know they're kind of like got those fixed personalities that you know it's like okay this character is this type this character is this type and maybe it's just me playing way too many games but well you know. it's it's sometimes it's just a motivational thing where the characters just aren't given a relatable reason for what they're doing if it, it, they, they fall into you know standard tropes oh you're the orphan and then you found out that you're an orphan because the king sent these people and destroyed the town where your parents were and then he adopted you and made you a knight and you didn't know this whole time and now you feel betrayed and you have to go save the world. Okay. How many times <laughs> have we heard this? Almost you know? as many times as we've heard of the Arthas factor, i.e., you know, guy he decides to kill his father, supersede, overthrow the kingdom, and you know, plunge the entire world into darkness. And then, you know, the heroes have to pretty much go and hunt him down eventually to, you know, bring the uh, bring upon justice upon the evil that he's wrought upon the world. Mm -hmm. Usually, the most important thing for me is a relatable villain. I mean, the characters, the heroes are sometimes two dimensional, but they get the most screen time. You have the most time to develop them, and if you have a two-dimensional evil, you know, a, a, a force that's that doesn't have a reason to be, a, why are you trying to destroy the world? How much sense does it make to destroy the world? And now, this is Final Fantasy mine. VII, as an example, uh, Sephiroth. Uh, I, I know people. Some people absolutely love Final Fantasy VII. Some people think it's overrated. Other people hate it. But from a character development standpoint. Sephiroth was a very well-developed evil. He was yep. crazy. He was manipulated from birth. He was uh, taken away from his mom. Who you, if you do enough questing, you'll later find. It was a science experiment. He was turned into a weapon. Well, um, <laughs> yeah, for anybody yeah, who hasn't uh, played Final Fantasy VII, I am sorry. Yeah, I was about to say, it's like, you know what, uh, since they did just do the Final Fantasy VII re-release on Steam, now would probably be a good time to go chime in on that. That little, being said... I find it a little difficult to, to believe, but anyway, <laughs> he was a well-developed villain, and he wasn't t attempting to destroy the world. He was destroying, he was wounding the planet enough to gather the planet's entire reserve of spiritual energy to become a god. That was the entire thing, and that is a, a motivation that's believable for somebody who's insane. Um, then you compare it to like Final Fantasy VI, something very close, you've got Kefka, who was absolutely batshit crazy. There was nothing interesting about him that, that I 
particularly liked. The rest of the characters were awesome. But Kefka seemed very two-dimensional. He was crazy when you met him. You never found out why he was crazy. He, he, he wanted to become a god. He wanted to control the world. Then he just started torturing and killing people on a power trip. And it was just a not just not interesting. It didn't compel the story in any way. And, you know, it's funny you bring up Kefka, because, you know, out of all the Final Fantasy villains, you know, Kefka is one of those, you know, the one of the villains I've always uh, very closely established with the Joker, i.e. wants to just let the world burn, etc., and kind of just laugh his ass off while he's doing it. And, you know, but the problem is, as you did say, you know, they never really portrayed that, and that could have been due largely to the fact that you know the game when the game was developed at that particular time but then that doesn't explain the amazing character development of actually the main characters and heroes that were seen throughout the game i mean exactly. you know tara was easily one of the most dynamic characters i've played with in the history of all the final fantasies probably the best the best hero character i've ever played uh, one of my favorite games ever is final fantasy 6 and three. she's probably well three in america and she's probably the best leading female heroine of, of any game I've ever played. The strongest, most interesting, most dynamic. She was never portrayed as weak, even though she was conflicted and scared at times. She, she was a great character. But that was the best part about her, is that she had realistic emotions. She wasn't just badass from the start. She basically developed, and you saw her grow more badass throughout the game, and that's what really made her such an appealing heroine. She's just like, not this either. I'm pretty much, you know, badass from the start, like what they've done with lightning, you know, pretty much lightning's like, look at me and my bad self, I have a, a personality like a sack of bricks, mm -hmm. and, and I'm pretty much going throughout the entire series, there's not too much character development until pretty much my sister, well, not going to say any more than that, because for, <laughs> Final Fantasy Thirteen is still fairly recent, and some people may still want to actually get into that series, but... That, but as we relate it to this game, you can take it in the exact opposite manner. It doesn't necessarily matter whether they start off as a badass or not, but the character needs to grow. And you can already look at the beginning of Tales of Exilia and see that uh, Maxwell here, she's starting from a very inhuman position. She's oh, very removed she from humanity. She and no she's going idea. to she's going to grow into her humanity and it will be interesting to see how she changes what she ends up as at the end of the game right and that's something i'm looking forward to that's good character development exactly i mean and that's what you really need in games these days but you know it's funny that we were talking about villains um right uh, um a couple minutes ago is that you know when it comes to the importance of villains this is i'm the biggest villain advocate because there is no hero if there's no villain in any story and you know except the, for pokemon. okay not gonna <laughs> lie pokemon has all the meth means and methods to create an amazing story, and they just don't utilize it. I honestly could write a fan fiction of Pokemon and make Giovanni the biggest batshit awesome um, asshole on the planet. Now, and I could interrupt here for a second. Uh, the screen, the screen, screen, screen we are at now um, is kind of our skill system, and um, anything with a, a yellow handshake next to it carries over to the linking system so it affects your partner excellent okay so Could I'll you tell us how it works uh, yeah. it you turn them on and off like I'm doing in the parameter sheet now um, oh well I meant okay. how it carries so over how does it affect them well see see the description here we've got uh, stamina increases the maximum HP by 5% so your partner will also get that effect I okay. His HP will, his or her HP will also increase by five percent as long as this parameter is active. Now, is there that a limitation to these parameters uh, that see, you have active at once? Do you see the SP in the top right-hand corner? As I do. I, as I turn things on and off, it consumes that. That's a very nice element of strategy. A lot of times, RPG games have a very flat combat system. Even if it's flashy and fun, there's not a lot of range for you to customize what you're doing and when. I, I really like that. That's a nice touch. It is a nice touch, especially considering it kind of promotes the 
either you want to play a very you know defensive build and have a lot of HP and defensives, and you're not okay, or you're not afraid to you know take a little bit longer in combat and sacrificing some offense in order to make sure that you know you can safely get through the combat, or you can you know heavily invest in offense and sacrifice the defense, and you know, you know it allows for a more guard based and reaction based gameplay where pretty much you know you'll get punished for each time you make a mistake. But you're, the risk, it's a higher risk versus reward style gameplay. So, I would definitely say that's actually pretty cool, especially from its predecessors, that's for sure. Yeah, and what you what you guys were, were saying about the Tales being the, the, the Tales game versus all the other RPGs, the thing that I think draws me to Tales games is it's familiar from incarnation to incarnation. Mm -hmm. It it's very similar. Yes, there are tweaks to the battle system. Yes, but you're always you, you can always count on a really good storyline. And you can always count on the battles, at least seeming familiar. Yeah. The, the games have always been fairly long, too. Yes. I mean, there are RPGs that you can beat in 10, 15 hours. Uh, I remember being a little disappointed in Final Fantasy X. As much as I loved the game, as, as nice as the storyline was, uh, I beat it in a weekend. I, I, like, I got the game after work at Walmart, because Walmart was open 24-7 and took it home and started playing it, slept, started playing it again, and I was done before I had to go to work on Monday. I was just like, oh, I had a fun time with it, but I just dropped 50 bucks on the weekend. Yep, and one of, one of the sad things is, is like, the biggest thing in terms of RPGs is, is that, a, and this goes for a lot of developers, is that they, it's like there's the main game and then there's the post game, and some people really enjoy a lot of that post game content where they can essentially, you know, they've got their characters maxed out and the best stuff. They want to basically go out and beat the crap out of something that is a worthy foe. And one of the things that I've always liked about Tales of Zillia, or Tales of Zillia, all the Tales series that I've seen and Tales of Abyss in particular, is that there was so much to do post game. There's like hidden bosses all over the place. There's various different things that you can do. Even some dungeons where pretty much it's like you know this is the end game content, which they had in some like the original Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy One. Looking at you when I'm talking about this, but you didn't see it in a lot of other. Um, Final Fantasy games where there's like not that many post game bosses. You know, and well, again, Final Fantasies are very story driven games. So mm -hmm. when the story's over, there's not a reason to hang around in the world for much longer. But, but um, the they, they the Tales that... games are also story driven. They are completely story driven. It's, right, it's what but... draws me to the game. The wrap-up of the end of the game, well, I can't no qualify recent combat. Tales games because I haven't played them, but I can compare something to Final Fantasy IV, for example, uh, two, is that that was such a final wrap-up. The world was done. Uh, the was king and queen close. are sitting on the throne of Baron, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and they added well. more game to it. Uh, Fans made the uh, the After Years, which was pretty darn good, and they made it an excellent remake on the PSP, I believe, for Final Fantasy IV. Um, and that added an entire post-game dungeon. I believe it was uh, inside of Mount Ordeals, the Cave of Ordeals. Yeah. But in other games, you, it's not something that you see a lot because the game is supposed to have an end. Um, Final Fantasy VIII is a little notable in that way because there was so much to get. Uh, there were several hidden espers, uh, well, guardian forces, and beating freaking Ultima Weapon down in the research facility required you to be like level 80 plus in order just to handle the hits he was putting out. So you had to do a lot if you mm -hmm. wanted to be a completionist in that game. Final Fantasy X was uh, probably the best example of end game content because even though you couldn't, you couldn't really do it after the game ended, so to speak, you had to do it before the ending, there was a lot with uh, capturing the creatures for the, the, mm -hmm. uh, the arena, um, tons and tons of uh, sphere grid to cover if you wanted to break in via key spheres. All the ultimate weapons all had to be uh, ridiculously acquired 
Um, God, I hated doing that Chocobo race. <laughs> hey, let's um, be real now. Final Fantasy X, it was all about Blitzball. Yeah. Play yeah. Blitzball. Oh god. oh god, don't remind- oh god. I loved Blitzball, it was I amazing. I hated Blitzball. What is wrong with this conversation? That Blitzball was amazing, it's like me in SW Tour with freaking Hutball. Everyone was like, I hate Hutball. Hutball was amazing! It was my freaking fantastic. That I've seen in an RPG, uh, hands down. I like it way better than the card game in 9. <laughs> uh, nine is a, nine is like that dirty if Final Fantasy that nobody likes to mention about. It was well, pretty much you either loved it or hate it. And for me, it, it was it's like the story was all right. I didn't really get attached to the characters that much. That was my big thing is that I could really just get into the characters. Not to mention uh, freaking Shaniqua or whatever the guy with, with the massive lion's mane for hair. I could not remember his name for the life of me. Um, he, he was just like this really irritating villain. I was like, this isn't even a good villain. This guy's just annoying. <laughs> yeah. Um, it goes it was... back to our conversation about well-developed villains. They're, they are in much. Yeah. yeah. He was and... not a good villain. But in, in 9, uh, I will say that I really enjoyed the story in 9, but not the main character's story. Um, Zidane and Dagger, they they were okay. It was very... I don't know. I, I'm not sure the word to use here. It, it was the same old story. Right. Uh, it, it very felt... cliche. But the yeah. story with Vivi, the little black mage, was incredible. There's that a reason. Awesome. Vivi is like the most loved character in almost all the Final Fantasy games. I mean, he's the token black mage. Like, he is used in Kingdom Hearts... He's used in pretty much a lot of different references. He's favored by a lot of people. Hell, have you seen how much freaking swag that little mage has? Like, I know. That guy, that's the reason I play Final Fantasy IX. But the card game, I really thought was good. And then when Blitzball came out, I was like, this, this is how many games should be incorporated into a game. They did a good job creating a tournament of sorts in Final Fantasy IX with the card game. But then, when Final Fantasy X introduced Blitzball, I was like, this this should be in every Final Fantasy game. Something like this. Because it actually had dynamics. You, it wasn't actually very stale or generic gameplay. You actually had to think and actually play. You actually had to, you know, strategize, build your team. Some people were better at some things. And you had to really, you know, take into account when you were basically building your team. You know, some players were good. Of course, everyone... I forget, there was this one player that everyone had on their team, but that was because he was just broken in every way, shape, and form. And one of the things is you never wanted to fight against him, of course, unless you were looking for a challenge. Because I believe the way that the system works is any of the characters that you didn't have on your Blitzball team were pretty much fair game for the opponent's teams to have on them. I'm not mistaken about that. It's been it's a very long time. It's been a while, yeah. yeah. I, couldn't, it, I couldn't verify it. But... For a mini game to have that much depth and detail, I love seeing that kind of stuff in you know RPG games because it gives you reasons to come back to the game. You know, well, stuff to that me, it was that it was so well incorporated into the story. You're that talking actually, about a broken, almost perpetually post-apocalyptic world. They're constantly living in fear. Sin is coming around, destroying people, wrecking villages. And this is the thing people rally around. It's, it's their distraction. It's, it, it's the TV. It's the movies of our culture. And it, it fit in the world so well, but it wasn't just this ambient piece of information. It wasn't just this background thing. It was something, as the player, you got to participate in. It was the key to the development of your main character. It was what linked him between the worlds, gave him a point of commonality to start from. Uh, it, right. it was a great mechanic for storytelling. It was a great minigame, uh, well-organized to play, and I haven't seen its equal in a game since. I, I have not either, and that's the thing that's, you know... It, it, it's really one of those things that's like, you know, you're always like looking for someone to one-up that. And I, it's just, when it comes to RPGs these days, I've just been felt so let down. Because one of the things, one of two things usually happens with RPGs. They're like, for example, like the recent Deadpool game. I love the Deadpool game. I thought the story, it was great. The, the humor was absolutely hysterical. It was hilarious. <laughs> but you played it in a day and you were done. 
That's mm -hmm. true. Now, now, if I can interrupt the conversation for a yes. second to explain more mechanics of the game. Um, <laughs> I know, it's boring conversation. <laughs> it has nothing to do with what you two are, are, are discussing and elaborating on. Yes, but... let's get back to the game. <laughs> yes, you know, the, the reason we're actually here for. Um, but, yeah, uh, the, every anytime you see a, what, an exclamation point above someone's head, like, has been sit sitting here for the last minute or so, it means it's a side quest or a side event that has some sort of impact, uh, something they want you to do. It, it's a fetch quest or something, if you will. Oh, In this particular, what, we, what we've been doing for the last episode is taking care of that fetch quest. They wanted us to kill a set of monsters. And so when we complete this, they'll give us gold, which happens to be ta the Tales of Games form of currency, and possibly items. These things are located all over the game and kind of give it its longevity. You can probably finish this game in about 40 hours but what I've what I've heard reports of is if you're a completionist and want to find all these side quests it's probably gonna take you uh, a good 80 or 100 hours and That's that makes me happy impressive. yes I mean granted the first thing that ran through my mind it's like those somewhere at the NAMC office. Uh, sir, we just got a call from Blizzard Entertainment. They said they were talking about this uh, copyright infringement on their um, quest exclamation marker. What? Really? They're ca uh, calling us for something trivial like that? Yeah, they said they needed their mound of gold to get bigger. Fine, we'll change it to green and give it like an emoticon bubble. That way it's different. <laughs> <laughs> and every time there's an event, there's a little side... Uh, whatever this is, cutscene. And it seems like Mira hey. has collapsed. Why has she collapsed? Oh, no. well, let's listen in and find out. Hmm. No fever. How are you feeling? I don't seem to have any strength. Um, have you been eating properly? I've never eaten. Ever? Through Sylph, I drew life from the air. Gets With the stick. Dean's power, Pop -pop. I received sustenance from the water. Pop -pop. What's she talking about? I guess the spirits gave her all the energy she needed. Well, now you're gonna have to nourish yourself the old-fashioned way. I see. So this is what you call hunger. <laughs> Fascinating. So, should we rest at the inn? Now that you mention it, I could use some grub myself. Have you been eating properly? <laughs> oh my god! I was like, I was like, do I have, do I have to mute my mic? Do I, I'm, I'm gonna laugh. I need no, to mute you, my you mic. You can, you can laugh. <laughs> That's fine. You guys like, oh man. Line. What? Of course. You passed out. Have you, you been eating properly? She uh, doesn't have a fever. <laughs> really? I was like, that's the you're first you're thing that anyway. comes out of your mouth when Why you see someone collapse. Unless you're that facial expression right there. <laughs> <in the laughs> <eyes. laughs> I was just thinking that if you were spotted. Oh, like, well, love, I love animated characters. I really do. Because, you know, it's one of those things that you really don't get to appreciate so much in, like, so many different um, avenues. Like when you try to make it like semi-realistic graphics, you know, you don't get that you know same animation or expression in, in that you do in some anime characters. It's one of the things that I've always loved about animation versus you know that realism. A good comparison would be uh, Wind Waker. Wind Waker was a game that I thought was absolutely stupid when it was coming out. I was like, why would they do this to, to Zelda? Why? It looks yep. like crap. And then I played it, and the cartooniness of it, the, the humor, made it all work. The way they animated the faces wasn't a blocky, like, open mouth kind of animation. It was flat so that they could get those anime-style facial expressions. And it I agree. Did so well. Welcome. It it did work so well. I think the only thing that I'm still irritated about Wind Waker right now is the fact that it's getting a remake before Majora's Mask, and that's yeah. something I will take all the way to Nintendo's doorstep and beat them down until they're black and blue halfway to Sunway. It's like, guys, seriously, everyone wants it. Make it happen. I don't know why. What's well, an HD remake of Final Fantasy VII hasn't happened yet either. It actually, yes, it's, you know, funny you mentioned that because Sony's actually given a an official statement in regards to that. Mm -hmm. now, um, Sony's statement in regards to that Final Fantasy VII remake is the fact that the, because that so many people view seven as the quote unquote best one, and same thing with eight. Essential RPG. Yes, it's not. It was so revolutionary at its time. 
it they said that basically they have to do something. So what's going to happen when Mila has her first meal? She's okay. gonna burp. Because girls don't fart. <laughs> Hey, not bad. Not bad. It's good. I quite enjoy ingesting calories with you. Humans should learn to cherish these simple pleasures. I'm. I'm just so waiting. So happy. <laughs> I'm just waiting for her to start inhaling the food. Style. Come on. Dragon Ball Z style. Yes, exactly. <laughs> All of a sudden, you just see like this mountain pile of dishes, when it's all over. Don't worry about it. And then just the main character's just like, "My wallet." Oh. <laughs> so now, what are you gonna do? Well. Good morning. Good day, Jude. I was just about to share my plans with Alvin. What is it? I'm thinking of returning to Nia Kara. Is that your hometown? More accurately, and I, it's I where think my shrine for is. Myself, the anime if I go style, back, I might the, be able to the character the expressions, form. all of it so, is kind of what draws me to the Kells game and this keeps is where me you returning. Come in, Jude. Mm -hmm. Because Will you accompany some me to of the cutscenes, some what? of the skits, some it's true of that you brought your current the interactions upon that the yourself, characters have but I bear some of the are laugh well. out loud funny. I'll put in a good word for you, you with don't the people right. of Nia Kara. In a I'm sure they'll look after fantasy. you. For an example, in a Final Fantasy, it's... Your main Remember character when you told me I seemed unconcerned? Brooded, I decided to take that to heart. Who, you know, is just Mila, you don't need to practice depressed. your sword play anymore? And has no, no idea need to concern yourself with what my martial life is. Abilities. That's kind well, of what it else, amounts to. You know my swing the pointy end. Uh, uh, I, I don't think I, that's I, quite true. There's a lot of diversity okay. in Final Fantasy games. Yeah, but the problem really is that they're not intended to be entertaining like that normally. The funniest moment I think Come in all of Final Fantasy it was Rydia Wait, slapping Edge us, <laughs> in Final well, Fantasy 4. Um, or maybe uh, hey, Yuna hey, and hey. Titus laughing out loud. That was I pretty think good. My fun favorite moment was when, uh, when in Final Fantasy 7 when Cloud fainted at the Honeybee Inn because oh. he was trying to get like a fake ID or, or something and it's like this it's a stripper club and it, right as the chick's about to come in he just flat out passes out and the, the like the macho beefy like uh, flamboyantly dressed up man just comes and he's like beating the living piss out of his face he's like wait up bitch and I'm like <laughs> uh, the I mean the the thing is that those moments are very few and far between in Final Fantasy games. They're meant to be dramatic, so you don't tend to. They're meant to be dramatic, so dramatic and serious, and, and not even thought-provoking. They're, they're, they're meant to tell a story. They're not right. meant to make you laugh. And with you don't get that entertainment value. Yeah. Tales games have been hilarious. And, and, I mean, they are very keen to their own sense of humor. Yeah. And I've said it before, this is what keeps drawing me back to the... The Tales series. It's that humor. It, when I sit down with a video game, I want to be entertained. I don't want to be depressed at the end of my play session. Yeah. Uh, comparable game, I would put uh, Ulterior Iris games in that same vein. They're very animated, very playful, goofy. Uh, I think the first one had a cat girl named uh, Norn. And at one point, Norn is seeing and talking to Klein, and she's like, I'm sleepy, meow. Can I sleep with you? And he's like, whoa, the ESRB will go nuts. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's literally the line in the game. And I, I just that died laughing. Right I, mean, I love that. Yeah, it's it, great. It's great. You, you, now that you bring that up, it is something that's somewhat of a rarity in games these days. And I'm getting the impression that we're getting heading towards another break here. So I won't go on another tangent so freaking Daniel doesn't want to just beat me to death as <laughs> saying, oh, just, oh, shut up! <laughs> well, I... Uh, but you guys can finish your thought. Finish your thought and then we'll, we'll wrap up for, I, for the... I was, uh... You know, it's like, when you look at some in games, like, the reason why I love Kingdom Hearts so much is so... It's so... It has Final Fantasy, but it's so different. It's Square's take on with humor and they do it so well i mean one of my first square enix games before final Fantasy 7 showed up on my uh, on in my game console was super mario rpg legend of the seven stars 
mm-hmm. still in my book as one of the best games ever existed. Hilarious. The game did have its, you know, it had a bit of a dark setting. You know, it was like, you know, Smithy was this badass guy who was like basically coming to essentially shatter everyone's dreams and pretty much turn everything into machines. And there's humor, there's laughter, there's stuff that makes you go, the heck? Huh? It was absolutely great. Yeah. And, you know, it's like, I, I agree with you, Dan. It's like, you know, one of the things that I would say is a good draw is that is humor. I love humor. Any so. final thoughts, uh, Tempest? No, I'm good. We've pretty much covered the humor angle. Uh, this <laughs> game is great. Other games are great. But we've had a, a dry spell of that kind of playfulness in RPGs lately. And very, very Tales is a, a nice, refreshing look at that. Mm-hmm. Not to mention also... Keep coming back. Yeah, and not to mention also, now that we are talking about Tales, what's what I'm looking forward to is the Disgaea remake that they're coming out for the PS3. Well, mm. with my favorite main character, Laharl. And I was like, ooh, yes, 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 yes. So. so. With that said, my name is Dan. I'm joined by Lord Strell and Tempest. This has been a Let's Play of Tales of Exilia. You can find us at torncamera.com, any one of our social sites, facebook.com backslash torncamera, twitter.com backslash torncamera, youtube.com backslash Twonkhammer and ENT, which hopefully you found us and are watching currently. You can also find any of our podcasts on Stitcher. Um, and we are we have always been and probably always will be brought to you by Audible. Go sign up for your free audiobook. Go to Twonkhammer.com backslash Audible and sign up there. You get like I said, you get one free book. It's yours forever. You can keep it until eternity falls apart and it will still be yours but in that process you also support us thank you for watching my name is Dan